Thanks from Maximum PC here at GDC 2016. I'm here at Xsense's booth, speaking with Hein from Xsense and uh, Bar from uh, Virtual Dutch Band. And can you tell us what we're looking at uh, right here? This uh, this suit here. Yeah, absolutely. So what you see here is a motion capture suit based on uh, inertial sensors. So she's wearing 17 trackers on body. So we collect sensor data from that and then we send it wirelessly to our software in a, you know, called ME Studio on the laptop and that's where the data is fused with the biomechanical model creating uh, this motion capture product. So you guys are you know, mostly focused on, or your background is mostly uh, on motion capture for like commercials and films and games and things like that. But you're sort of uh, delving into the realm of uh, virtual reality, getting your whole body into VR. Yeah, right? that's correct. So uh, we already also have clients in the professional market for VR, so train simulation. And of course, the VR uh, for consumer is uh, is very different, has very different um, requirements. And uh, we are indeed uh, showing uh, a tech demo uh, together with the virtual Dutchman to uh, to look at uh, how this technology can be used for uh, for VR. Yeah. yeah. So I just had a, a you know about a five ten minute uh, demo wearing the suit myself. I gotta say you know I was I was pretty impressed. Uh, tracking felt really accurate. Uh, you know I crouched down. Uh, I looked at my elbows. It basically what what joints does it track exactly? It, it pretty much tracks everything. Except for finger, for, for toes, pretty much, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we have like sensors on all, all body segments, so that's why we have all that information about all the segments that are moving. And, uh, and, and because you're wearing it on body, it's, it's so flexible and you can use it anywhere you like, just like here on, on, on the booth. Right, so I think when I tried it on, there were sensors that tracked uh, your, your feet, your, uh, your sort of your shins, your knees, uh, your belly. Uh, your hands, uh, your elbows, your shoulders, your head, and your sternum. A am I missing anything, or is that pretty much it? Oh, that's correct. And uh, we have 17 trackers, but our output, uh, we actually uh, uh, create 23 body segments that we are, um, you know, that's a part of the, the skeleton that we output. Uh, that's because we do some interpolation. And we think for uh, VR application for consumers, we, re we drastically need to reduce the amount of hardware, so we need to do more smart um, uh, a smart layer of intelligence to get rid of more hardware and to reduce the amount of uh, trackers, basically. Cool, and I got a chance to try out a game that, uh, or a demo that you developed, uh, right Bart? Yeah. Uh, can you talk about what it's like to, uh, to make a, a demo or an experience based on this suit? Yeah, so we got the chance to uh, make an exper experiment, VR experiment with the Xsense suit and the Mons VR gloves, so you can actually see your fingers uh, move. And normally when you do something in VR, um, yeah, you have head tracking, yes, you have controllers, you can see some of your virtual hands, but you're missing your actual body. And to the full immersion of being really present by you know, lifting up your leg and see all those movements, but also uh, attach uh, certain objects to it, like a, like a virtual belt, um, it's really yeah, immersive to, let's say, uh, customize your gun, uh, reload it. Uh, once you get used to actually pushing out a clip and reloading yourself in, uh, yeah, in a virtual world, it, it adds to immersion. And it, that was kind of the whole feel of the experiment. Obviously, uh, there are some things to improve, but the overall feel and uh, intuitive um, actions you get from it uh, makes it really easy to pick up. And this is definitely something where you see it's going. I mean, having controllers is fun, but the precision you get with the, yeah, the actual tracking of your own parts, including your fingers, uh, it really adds. And, and uh, uh, does it add any latency at all? Uh, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, the, I mean, it's currently it's just an experiment. It, it's not as uh, uh, accurate as, uh, let's say, uh, the, the controllers like Oculus or uh, Vive um, uh, are releasing with their VR setup. But yeah, that's currently not the aim. It's just, just more as an experiment to see, uh, yeah. It's very early on. Yeah, it's very, really early on, and it's just scratching the surface where this uh, technology will go. Uh, also, um, what's really interesting about this tech, it's, um, it's um, streaming wirelessly, so there's no occlusion. So there are some other issues, but once you settle for those, there's no occlusion, there's no restriction in, in terms of uh, distance. I mean, uh, the system can track you uh, for a fair uh, amount of distance, uh, and, and that's really interesting. Do you think it's going to be hard, and maybe this is a question for both of you, do you think it's going to be hard to, to get other developers to, you know, design for your suit? 
Well, I mean, once, the thing, once people start to realize that inertia technology is, is the way to go for, for some of the applications, um, then it's finding the right partners to work with. I mean, Xen is a technology provider. Uh, we like to work with partners who want to bring this further down into certain applications. So it, it's, it's a matter of working with the right partners to, to get this, this to, the, to, to the consumer. Cool. Yeah, you know, like I said when I tried it, it was. Uh, it seems to be. It's one of those things where I feel like it's very early on, but has a lot of promise. Uh, you know, I can. I, you know, I was moving every single joint. There was a little bit of lag, a little bit of latency, but like I said, it's early on. But I could see my elbows. I could see my knees. I could see my feet. I could see things rotate. I could crouch. I could, you know, lie down on the ground. It all felt, you know, relatively good for for something that's you know pretty early. Uh, what are your guys' plans? You know, where do you guys want to go with this? Well, um, it's likely that we uh, build like a VR a demonstrator, uh, and again, we're looking for partners to to really have the ant application uh, know clearly what the requirements are and uh, and start developing something in, in, in that direction. So um, it, it's it's about knowing what the market really demands instead of just coming out with with a you know a cool demo or or, or a product that's not fit for the market. So I mean. I'm sure you guys are kind of biased, you know, if I ask you this question, but is this the future of VR input? Getting well, your whole body in there with a suit. Well, I think there is a, there's a lot going for it, uh, like you see with variable technologies, wearing uh, fitness trackers. I mean, that, that works um, already for consumers, and I think in a similar fashion, although having a, a few more trackers, this will also work as a VR input for, you know, for, for um, these kind of applications, yeah. Do you have any input there? Is this the? Can you see this being a big part of VR moving forward? Um, yeah, and I, I necessarily not for consumers uh, in the first part, but if you uh, think about you know um, you know larger events with more people and not necessarily at home because the whole thing about XSense is you can use it in large uh, areas uh, without so maybe like arcades or something yeah, like exactly. that. Exactly. So like uh, uh, VR laser questing uh, applications like the Void. I, I think that's a really interesting market uh, for this to take off and then. In the end, you know, if it's going there, it maybe uh, slim down to a consumer version, which is more affordable or easier to use at home. So yeah, I, I really believe getting all your limbs in VR is something uh, that can add up to the uh, whole immersion and uh, interaction with VR, especially with others. Cool. So, yeah. So the suit I tried on, I think you said it was like around, you know, twelve thousand dollars. But you did say that you could you could uh, simplify it. You, you know, it, it wouldn't be as uh, you know complicated or as ex expensive. Can you touch upon like what shortcuts you can take for if you guys did want to go down the consumer route? Well, I mean, if you start designing for a, a different um, uh, application, you also take into account the cost or the cost of, of components that you you're putting in. Um, also, uh, one of the reasons. Uh, to be able to, or, or uh, to make it fit for consumer application, you want to reduce the amount of hardware, and that directly also reduces uh, the cost of, of, of the, the product, of course. Um, and uh, taking advantage of, of uh, being part of Fairchild and, and having um, MEMS ourselves, you know, uh, really helps in, in reducing costs. Cool. And then uh, my last question for both of you guys: How can our readers and viewers uh, find out more about you guys? Yeah, they can go to uh, xn.com and um, and check out all the the products and applications that our clients using our products for. Cool. And then uh, for you, Bert? Yeah, they can uh, go to the virtualdutchman.com website, and uh, we've got some cool projects going on, uh, both for Oculus, for the Vive. They can just uh, yeah, email us, download them, or uh, check it out. Cool. All right. Thanks, guys. Yeah. All right.